Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Winter Wives podcast. We have a special person here, my sister wife, <laughs> Tammy. So glad she could finally jump on here and that we have a little bit of time that we can jump on and record. Um, just a disclaimer, we have some two rowdy kids outside, so you might hear some of that throughout this, but we'll get started. We decided since we don't have a ton of time, we were just going to do a Q&A and we will answer a couple of questions and um, if we don't have time to answer them this time, we'll try and do some more Q&As and we will um, try and get Colton on a Q&A as well because there's a lot of good questions that I think that he would answer the best for mm-hmm. us. So, All right, we're going to start with Brittany Tucker writes is her Instagram handle. I really want to know the dumb things you guys argued about when first living together. Not anything big, but silly things like how to fold towels and who gets control of the remote or how to organize the shared spaces. I am so weird, but I like the little things. And if you do that, any organization tricks and tips or cleaning tips and tricks. But the ridiculous arguments are my favorite. All right, so we're going to go back to when we first moved in together because I think that's where this would start to apply. Because in the first couple of years of our marriage, we, we only saw each other in short bursts. So we never kind of ran into those kinds of things. So I'll let you start. Yeah, um, it didn't really start being a problem until we moved in together. And... <laughs> Once we did, um, we kind of, our schedules just were hit and miss. We, it took a while for those to mesh together, really. So the biggest one that stands out is when we would do laundry. Um, I like to leave the light on because it reminded me that there was laundry in there because otherwise I always just forgot and then it would be like the next day and be like, crap, I have a load in the washer. So, but Sophie didn't like the light on. So we ended up having a conversation about it and it seemed like a pretty big deal at the time. And it was just like, what is happening here? (laughs) Um, I would always, the laundry room was right next to my room and I would always walk down the hall and see the light on. And we also had just moved into a bigger house. So our power bill was bigger and we were just trying to like, blend all of our finances and paying the bills and I was like highly stressed out that our our power bill was so much um and so the light thing seemed to be like in my mind that was the reason why our power bill was so expensive was because we just had random lights throughout the house that were on and so like the laundry room um I remember we finally like talked about it and I was like I don't know. We just kind of... It was a really awkward conversation because <laughs> we really had never had to have that conversation before or anything like that because we lived in different houses and it didn't really matter. And so when that did happen, it was just like, why are you doing that? So why do like, you why, leave the light on? <laughs> why is that a thing? And then it'd be like, and that, that was it. You know, like, well, I, I leave it on so that I remember to go because every time I walk down the hallway... I forget it's there until the next day and then I have to wash the load again and I really hate that. And so then she was like, she was going through her explanation going, okay, well, yeah, I can see both of those things. So like, and I totally get that because it really sucks when you wash a load and you forget to change it and then you have to rewash it just because it smells bad because it's been sitting in there all wet. Um, And the layout in Tammy's old house really made sense because Just as she was walking by, like, from her bedroom to the main area or whatever, the laundry room was right there, and she could see the light. But with where our laundry room is in our new house, it is, like, way around the corner, so, like, there's no walking by it. Um, And so I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, that makes sense, but it's not really some place that you walk by anymore, and so we kind of talked about that. Yeah. So. And now, I, there's a washer and a dryer in the downstairs as well, so I mostly use that now. So, not a big deal anymore. Well, and it, it didn't become a big deal after that. Like, we kind of talked about that. And it, it was interesting to hear both sides of, like, the reasonings and stuff and just realizing, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And a lot of those things that maybe bother you, like, 
if you talk about them, you realize there's reasonings in everybody's personality and like why they do things a certain way. So yeah. it was nice to finally break that barrier and realize, oh, like she has reasonings for doing the way that she does things as well as I have the reasons why I do my things, like talk about the cups. Oh yeah, like one of the other things is when we do dishes, we do them pretty differently. Um, stacking the dishwasher and then um, in the in the cupboards too. And so Sophie just did the dish, the, she just stacked them like in a different, like, so one cup up and one cup down. So Because they're like these, so I feel like maybe that that gives a little bit more space in the cabinet. And so I, it wasn't, it was like, that's a good way to do that, I'll do it too. Um, but then in the dishwasher, I always put, I know everyone's going to think I'm weird, but I always put the knives up because I hate when the knives poke in the little squares. I just hate it. And so I was just did that. And then Sophie was like, um, this is kind of dangerous. Can you do it another way? <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I can. I had reached in to grab like a fork or something out of it and it cut my hand. And so I was like, oh, can we put the knives down facing? And and so I didn't know it was a thing for her, but for me, it just made sense. Right. And, we just and I just, it her. was always like, for me, like I always did it that way. So I was like, always be careful. Like you just know that there's knives in there. And for her, she didn't know that. So... Um, yeah, just little things like that. And it wasn't ever, there wasn't ever, like, a confrontation, like, you have to do it my way. No, Or anything like that. Um, but it was interesting to be, that first conversation was the hardest. And then after, I was like, okay, it's normal to have, like, a different way to do things. And we can just talk about it. And I think really the biggest thing was breaking the barrier to talk about those things without, because I feel like when we first moved in together, we felt like, anything that we talked about was going to be like our breaking point just because we didn't know how to talk about things that like we didn't want to hurt each other's feelings mm -hmm. I think and so for for a long time they're such small things but we didn't want to talk about them because we thought that it was going to hurt each other's feelings or like does that make sense it's yeah. kind of like how we would not talk about something for so long and then we would finally talk about it and then it was a bigger issue than what it actually was to begin with and then finally we just started talking about each other candidly like talking to each other candidly throughout the day yeah so it, it really is just getting more comfortable with each other and realizing at the end of the day we both love each other it's like your brother if you like you're teasing your sibling and you know that at the end of the day it's going to be okay because you love them, they've been a part of your life, they are a part of your life, they're your family. And so it was just Tammy and I getting to that point where we realized like, yeah, I love you and, and if I say anything, I'm not trying to like hurt your feelings or anything and we can just definitely just like talk about those things candidly. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's see what some of those other questions were. Yeah, I feel like that's the the only little things that I can think about. Um, any organization tip or tricks and tips and or cleaning tips or tricks? Probably nothing that all of you wouldn't already know. You probably <laughs> have more tips and tricks than I do. Um, for us, our kitchen is like a tornado. We can clean it spectacular one day and then the next day it's, um, it's, a wreck again so for us I think a tip and trick would be just um, do what you can when you can and I feel like that's a big thing for both of us because we have off days we have days that we're not feeling well or headaches or different things and especially with keeping up with our kids we both try and clean when we can like if we're going into the kitchen for a drink or for lunch or whatever. I think we both just try and keep cleaning up little things throughout the day. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like that makes it feel better because we know that we're, we're just staying, we're doing what we can when we can. And then we're feeling like we don't have to stress so much about making it look spectacular all the time. We realize our family is growing and there's just a lot of things going on and we give ourselves grace as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. But every weekend we have a serious clean down, rundown of our house. So we always try and get our house clean on Saturday or 
if we don't get all of it done Saturday, we'll finish it on Sunday, which we really shouldn't do that, but yeah. <laughs> we should rest on Sunday, but um, we do pretty good, so we've, we've gotten a good groove down. All right, next question. From Blissful Randy, an Instagram handle, how do you make financial decisions? Do you have allotted amounts for extras, example, clothes, candles, personal items? How do you make family decisions? What if it comes to two to one? How do you decide? How do you divide chores? Who works and who takes care of the kids at home? So we'll start with the financial decisions and budgeting. Um, so we have, since we've moved in together, we've merged all of our finances. We, um, we went through all of our finances and we go through, okay, these are the bills that are, that we have every month that are just kind of solid bills. And then we each give a personal budget out to each of us, Colton, Tammy, and I, and then we have some go into savings. And if we get to the point where there is an expense that is outside of the budgeted, usually our budget kind of covers for like groceries, personal items, if we're like, you know, one month splurging on some Amazon items, <laughs> we kind of ebb and flow with between groceries and Amazon. Mm. But um, if there's something that is outside of those things, we just talk to each other about it and say, hey, you know, I need to buy, I need to buy, uh, I don't know, what can you think of? Let's just pretend I need to buy a, a car seat and stroller because I don't have one and Tammy's is expired and so I need to do that. So that would be outside of, it would be more expensive and we would just talk about that and we would just pull that out of savings to pay for that. I thought of another example but I can't think of it now. Um, Airplane tickets. <laughs> Airplane tickets. If we, if one of us wants to go see family and needs uh, flight tickets, we do that. We just pull it out and we make sure that we have, you know, that we're not over pulling from our savings to make sure that we can still, you know, pay for medical bills or whatever. Um, I can't think of what else. And usually we talk about finances pretty fluidly, and I know that that is a very gray area for a lot of families and for a while it was for us too just because we hadn't merged everything and we you know we were still merging our lives so it's hard to talk about financial goals when you're still kind of on two different tracks so we worked slowly on merging everything paying off debts getting everything into a good good um flow and organized and now we have like family goals that we are working towards and if something changes or say if if something maybe gets pushed further up on the goal list then we just reprioritize that and that's what we're saving for mm -hmm. and then we just we all work towards that um let's see what else on that one so really we just kind of talk about it and if there's something extra or special um, other than that, like we make a Costco trip every now and then, and we usually just pull that from savings because usually when you get Costco items, they're one, you can't go to Costco without spending hundreds of dollars. <laughs> and so we usually just try and make that. We have all of the things that our family needs for staples and diapers and, you know, sour cream and milk and all of the different things that we get. And we just that's for the whole family household um, benefit. So we just pull that from savings. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably, do you have anything to add for our finances or? Nope, we covered it. <laughs> we do like to every now and then listen to Dave Ramsey. We kind of follow some of his stuff, um, which has helped us really feel more prepared for like our savings and stuff um, and making sure that we have the money when we need it. We have, you know, an emergency fund and we have an overall family fund that we call is our savings, our savings for family things. Like if Sadie needs to go to the dentist, it comes out of that or if we have medical bills or 
plane tickets or Colton needs a saddle for the horse or whatever, we pull out from that main family fund. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you make family decisions? What if it comes to two to one? How do you decide? So we've never let it come to two to one. Um, for us, it's all about mutual consent um, from the everything. Um, so it doesn't really work if one person doesn't want to do something. Then it would, it would just end up being not a great experience. So whenever there's anything that needs all three of us to decide on, um, we, we would talk about it together. If there's a problem, then we go into more depth for that. Why, why don't you want to do this? What's the problem? Can we talk about it? Can we figure it out? If we can't, then we find some other way to compromise to make that work in another way. So whether that's, you know, hey, we all wanted to go out to, you know, check on the cows and, you know, maybe I don't want to go. So I just say, you know, you, you guys go and I'm going to stay behind or, you know, we'll do it. I want to go, but I've got this other thing that I have to do. So let's plan on doing it all together at another time. Like we just try and work out all of those different things um, so that everyone gets their needs met. And it's never, it's never a two to one or anything, a majority rules, anything like that. We always try and make sure that everyone is okay with the decision. Otherwise we don't do it. Yep, definitely. All of the above. Um, it really, if, if there's, if there's kind of a two to one, usually we try and all talk about it together and talk about, okay, well, why, why don't you think this is a good idea? And we just try and navigate that and problem solve it together. We never say, okay, I say yes, I say yes, I say no. We don't ever do that. It's, okay, how can we all get on the same page? Unless it's going to eat food. Sometimes we do it then. <laughs> I know, but it's, such, it's it's never two to one. It's usually one to two, and Colton is the one that wins. Usually. <laughs> he's usually, he's actually a pretty picky eater. Him and Sadie are pretty picky eaters, and Tammy and I usually just go along with it, which is also why we've started doing sister wife dates, because mm -hmm. we really like to go to a Thai food place, and Colton hates it. And so we're like, fine, we, Tammy and I are just going to start going. <laughs> That's going to be our thing. And he's not sad about it at all. No, he likes it. He's like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so anyways, and I really enjoy that because it, it, especially now both of us have having kids, it's nice to get away from the kids and just spend time with each other. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nice. So it's a little bit of self-care for us. Sister wife self-care. <laughs> Um, how do you divide chores? Who works and who takes care of the kids at home? So we'll start with how do you divide chores? I would have to say we don't. We, I mean, we both do our own laundry. So that's one thing. And then as far as the rest of the house goes, we really just all pitch in and try and do what we can when we can. Yeah, more than, more than a divide it's it's like divide and conquer like mm -hmm. usually what happens is um I try and put the dishes in the dishwasher in the evening so that they're started while we're sleeping then in the morning I'll take them out and get Sadie ready then I go down to work and Sophie will put the dishes away and she'll wipe down some counters do some of those things when I'm done working then you know I'll try and do a, a quick tidy up of any areas that need it um, if Sophie has some downtime in between putting Ephraim to sleep, she'll do the same. Mm -hmm. So it's just like whatever needs to happen, um, whoever has a little bit of extra time to do that, will do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes, like on the weekends a lot, we'll work together and we'll just say like, hey, let's, we've got like an hour, let's clean the kitchen as much as we can. And we'll just do, I'll clean the counters and do the dishes while she sweeps and mops. So we just try and make a team of it and just make it happen as, as quickly as possible so we can right. get as much done. Um, so yeah, yeah. chores are, it works better that way for us. And in the evenings, usually like um, if Tammy's making dinner, we will both be in the kitchen. I'll be cleaning and doing the dishes while she's making dinner and we'll kind of divide and conquer that way. And it gives us that time to just kind of talk and, and visit with each other while we're getting mm -hmm. a common goal. 
uh, finished and get everybody ready to hopefully have family dinner together. A lot of times um, Colton has to go and do hay, so we don't usually get to... Oh, what was that? We don't usually get to... Um, we don't always get to have dinner with him. So Tammy and I have worked, we've been working on a nice evening routine with the kids. And that changes throughout every week sometimes because Ephraim's schedule keeps changing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Next question. So. Um, this is another one from Brittany Tucker writes Instagram handle. Ooh, also, first impressions of each other and Colton from each of you. Also, I would love to hear more in depth of your journey to becoming friends slash sister wives and how you handle jealousy, etc. Oh, and shopping trips. Oh, shopping tips. You both always have the best outfits. So we'll start with, I guess I read this wrong before, but this is our impressions of each other and of, of Colton. Mm -hmm. So you can go first with that one. So first impressions, um, for me meeting Sophie, um, we were, we were just meeting as friends and I, I was, I don't know, you were really nice, you had a lot of good ideas, you were easy to converse with, um, those were probably my very first impressions, um, your grandma was a little pushy. <laughs> yeah, she was. <laughs> it's a good thing they're not asking for first impressions of her. <laughs> yeah. Those were our first meeting together. Those were my first impressions. Like, oh, this is nice. This is this is good and and good questions and and good conversation and um and then from there like honestly it went pretty fast like there was a lot of, there, it was just a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my first impressions were just continually changing a little bit, like, but those were the very first ones. Um, As a side note with my grandma, just to put on the record, she does play a huge part in us getting together, and so we have to thank her for that, and yes. she knows that she has a strong opinion. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's not always a bad thing. No, but she's very loving behind us, so we have to say that. Um, what about Colton? So, seven years before they met me, what was your first impression of Colton? For Colton, <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> um, I remember first seeing him in a class that we were taking together, like, not on purpose, but we mo both mutually shared and just thinking he was really cute. That was my first impression. He was really cute, and he looked kind of lonely, and so I was like, I should be his friend. And then it took me half of the semester to work up the courage to go over and sit by him. And then we ended up being in the same church group, um, and he actually taught me how to play the organ, and that's kind of how we we got together that way. Um, but yeah, that was my very first impression, that he's really cute. And then our families knew each other really well, so I actually knew quite a bit about him, um, even though I didn't know it. <laughs> so yeah. That would be it probably for me. Okay. So my first impression of Tammy was she was kind of intimidating <laughs> because for my mind, I mean, I was raised in plural marriage. Tammy was not. And so for her to have such a strong testimony that her and Colton chose this through the path that they had been led through, like, you know, her telling me, you know, I came to this through just prayer and reading my ancestors journals and it, there was just so much conviction in that like I was just amazed and um she was very quiet and so I just felt like man she you know she's she's a, a very intimidating person in in a good way because she's strong like just a very strong person and um I admired that I was like wow I like the fact that she has such a strong testimony and that this is where she's at. So that was my first impression. Um, and also seeing how accepting she was, I was amazed because there's a lot of, 
There's a lot of people that are kind of raised in plural marriage that their families, it's been, you know, plural marriage before them. And I feel like some of them go into it because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. And they do not handle plural marriage very well. And they're not accepting. And they're not, they don't have that deep enough testimony to choose it and to um, get past, you know, those struggles, I guess. Um, so the fact that Tammy was the way that she was and she was so accepting from day one was just like amazing to me. Like, wow, like I, I don't think I could have found a better sister wife. And I know we, we had our own struggles. We had, you know, going into plural marriage, none of us really had close, um, close examples that we could look to for plural marriage. So we did have a lot of struggles, but none of them were the ones that I thought we were gonna have. That's true. None of them were. Um, and so Tammy continued to surprise me every single time. Like, you don't have a problem with this? Are you okay with this? Like, um, we were already technically engaged and we all three were choosing to go out and look for a wedding ring. And my grandma, who comes from plural marriage as well, she was like, oh, are you sure that's a good idea? Uh, like, I feel like she has a lot of experiences from, like, jealous sister wives. And so when she brought this up to me, I was like, what? It's, is it a bad idea? What do you mean? What's... <laughs> crap like is this gonna be a bad idea <laughs> and I remember I'm like I'm just gonna talk to her I'll just talk to her and I remember talking to you about it and you're like I'm fine and so I was just it was things like that over and over and over again that I thought you were gonna have a problem with it just based off of I guess my grandmother's experience <laughs> with having sister wives and realizing that just because we're living plural marriage it's not the same and just because she had certain struggles, we don't have to repeat those struggles. We just need to cross the bridges when we get to them and work through our own struggles, mm -hmm. not what somebody else says we're going to struggle with, which was a big mm -hmm. thing. So, I don't know, I just admired Tammy from the very beginning. So, <laughs> that's my first impression of her. And then with Colton, um, who is very quiet, like soft-spoken. I could hardly understand what he was saying when he spoke. And I could see how hard of a hard, like just, he was always working hard. And the little bit of time that I spent with him and Tammy, just seeing what they had done, they had planted an orchard together when they first got married. And I got to see that and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They had sheep, they had cows, they had just all of these things going on, and I I hadn't really been around that in my life, but I didn't know that that's what I wanted. Like, I never thought of, like, th these are the things that I want in a husband. I never thought of that. But seeing their way of living and seeing the things that Colton was so passionate about, I loved all of that. And, I mean, he never sat around and watched TV much. Like, he plays guitar, he sings, he works on the farm, he runs farm equipment, he went to college and got his doctorate in pharmacy, and it's just amazing all of the accomplishments that he had, and I could just see that he was so driven and that you guys had worked so hard for the life that you had, and I felt blessed to come into that. Um, I will say that I didn't have, and maybe it's because we met under just being friends, but I didn't start getting like feelings for Colton in the sense of a relationship until maybe after we were engaged. Um, but then I remember we were going, I, this is, Colton's maybe not going to like this, <laughs> but we were going on a hike and he was climbing up a ladder and I saw his butt and I was like, man, I've never had a thing for butts, but he has a pretty cute butt. <laughs> um, and I had never thought that before. And so I thought that was interesting. <laughs> 
Um, cause I don't even have a butt. So <laughs> how did he get blessed with that? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's all the horse riding. Uh, anyways, we'll just make sure Colton doesn't listen to this one, <laughs> this podcast. Anyways, um, I could just see that he was very kind and passionate and driven and I could see that he was going to be a great husband to to me as I could see that he was already a great husband to Tammy so very blessed to come into that all right we have a lot of questions so we are going to do a part two and try and answer some more of your questions but we're going to have to stop now thank you for listening and click subscribe below and we will see you guys in part two